What's up, everybody? This is Alex with WMD back at you again, and this time we're going to be talking about Crater. Crater is our new hybrid digital analog kick drum, and um, we're super excited about it. What we're going to do in this video is just kind of go through the different features, how to use them, and uh, then we'll just like make a little patch and just kind of hear it in the mix. So here's my Crater. As you can see, I've got uh, one channel of Metron going into the trigger, and then I've got the output running into my performance mixer. My Metron right now, I've just got it in fill effects mode, so I can just hit channel one to manually trigger it. So that's our sound right there. Like I said, we've got the hybrid analog digital thing. So what you're hearing right now is purely the analog side. This is an analog oscillator with a VCA in an envelope and a pitch envelope that gives you kind of that 909 sound. So we can just tap it here and we've got different decays. We've got a super long decay on here. So you can get that kind of like giant 808 kind of sound. We can bring it back and we can get really, really short here. So we've got pitch. This goes from completely inaudible um, subsonic sounds about to there. And then we've got the pitch envelope, which when you turn up the amount, you're turning up where the pitch envelope starts and then decay is the length at which the envelope's going to take to get back down to the uh, normal pitch, right? So we can get those crazy space sounds and we've got this nice long pitch decay. We can bring it down short, and this is how you add to attack to the analog side, right? So this is a good place to start. And uh, with the pitch, with the amount here, we can make it real attacky with a nice short pitch decay. But you can really dial in that sound that you're looking for. With no pitch envelope, we've just got a nice quick little blast. So this is more of your kind of 808 sound. And then as soon as we add a little bit of pitch envelope, we just get some more attack and this is kind of getting you more into that 909 territory. And kind of, uh, we can turn up the decay and the pitch decay a little bit and just get like more of a like techno kind of sound and kick drum. Maybe, maybe even more. So you can do those nice long pitch decays and that kind of just gives you a little bit of a smooth sound. Shorting and shortening it up gives us more of that quick attack. So one of the unique things about Crater is its sustain feature. Um, and that is this knob right here. What the sustain feature allows you to do is to send different gate lengths into the trigger input. So most drum modules just take trigger inputs. You just put a quick blip of voltage into them and then that is, and then it just runs through the full envelope, right? So one of the things about samplers that we really like is when you use samples in gate mode, like uh, in the Ross of Assimilator or any sort of sample like sampler like that, if you're using a kick drum, you can have a nice long kick drum and uh, then you can just use different gate lengths to say how long you're gonna play through that sample. So we took influence from that. So what you're gonna see now is I'm just tapping the button, right? But when I hold it, nothing's happening, but I am sending a gate out. So now I can turn up the sustain level and you can just hear it's just ringing out like an oscillator. So now we can hold it, to, we can hold the gate high in order to get a longer kick drum sound or just trigger it to get a shorter one. It's still going to run through the decay um, stage after you let go. So if we do a nice long decay, hold this out open and let it go, you're gonna hear that it slowly fades out. So the sustain feature is really cool to add some rhythmic elements. So to show you what I mean, we're just gonna do a nice short decay here. We've got our four on the floor and I'm just gonna put 100% gates on here. And that kind of opens it up a little bit. Maybe I'll do each one 200% gates in a row. Now we've got a nice long kick drum. And for this one, I'm gonna take this guy out and I'm gonna put a short trigger in between. So we'll just do a trigger. Right, so now we've got these different lengths here. So we can do triggers at the end here. 
We can do a nice long 100% gate all the way across here, end it with a 75. And now you can hear we've got that big long kick drum going on in the front. So sustain level is the, the level at which it's going to sustain. So at full range, we're just hearing that attack and then the oscillator is staying the same, staying just as loud. But we can dial in that volume there. So that way you still get that kick drum sound and then just a little bit of bass in the background if that's what you're going for. It sounds nice when we add a little bit of swing on here. So this is just a way to get more sounds out of the single module with just a single uh, sequencing lane. All right, so next we have the accent input. So I'm just gonna put on some triggers here, go out and output two of our Metron. We're gonna plug that into accent and I'm just gonna accent one and one and three. So this just makes that uh, initial hit just a little bit louder, a little bit more intense. You can see that we're making it to the top of the LED range on the indicator here. So that's just a little bit more dynamics to add to that. If you wanna use an accented kick drum all the time, you can actually just run triggers into the accent and not use the trigger, inside, the trigger input, and we're gonna be using the full range of the VCA the whole time there. So we'll do some more, more gates here. All right, so to keep going on the analog side of things, we have this clipping circuit, and this is a distortion on the waveform. So this is no distortion. We're just gonna add a little bit by going into the middle here. Just get some more high frequency harmonics. And then if we go all the way to the right, we've got even more. All right, so now next to the accent input, we have the saturation input, and this is a variable distortion. So I'm gonna take an output of Volterra and just use it like a uh, offset, and we're going to hear the different kinds of sounds of saturation we can get. So with this, we can add even more um, clipping to the clipping circuit, um, or just get a little bit of warmth. So here's what that sounds like. So this is no clipping, no saturation. I'm just gonna turn up the saturation a little bit. So really nice, just like subtle. All the way up. Back down. We'll go into the middle saturations or clipping circuit. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the hard, the hard side. We can add even more of that. So if you're trying to get a real distorted kind of gabber sound, that's how you do it. All right, so now moving away from the analog side, we're gonna go to the digital side. The digital side is where we are going to get even more attack from. I showed you earlier we can do the pitch envelope to get a little bit of added attack. Well, we don't have any high frequency click going on, and this is a thing that you hear a lot of times in produced music. You've got uh, different layers of kick drums on top of each other. Sometimes people put a hi-hat sample in there, filter it out, um, and that just gives you a little bit more attack to cut through the mix. So what we did is we made a uh, synthesis engine and we've got the click timbre here, so these are the different styles of clicks. And then click decay is just an envelope over those clicks. And the more you turn it up, we actually have a noise circuit in there that does a little bit of um, delayed noise to kind of simulate sympathetic vibrations in the room, give you more of like a snare rattling kind of sound, um, or just kind of a body sound. So let's, uh, let's hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna turn the click level up. You can hear that noise right away, right? So I'm gonna turn that back so we only hear the click. 
and I can turn that up real nice and loud so you can just hear the clicks and then here's the different sounds. So this just allows you to really dial in that high-end attack that you want. We can turn down the level a little bit. So now with some clipping. So you can hear even when we've got the clipping going on, the digital side really fits in there and just sounds really nice. All right, so the next thing we're gonna show off is the volt per octave input. So why would you want a one volt per octave input on a bass drum? Why would you wanna tune the bass drum? Well, there's a couple different reasons. One, you might just wanna tune the bass drum to the track that you're playing. A lot of producers really enjoy having a tuned uh, bass drum that just like fits in the mix and sounds a little bit and just fits in with their bass lines and all their melodies and stuff. Another thing you can do is use it as a bass line itself, right? So that's what I'm gonna show here. So we've got our, got our sequence here and I'm just going to take my output of my Volterra, run it into the Volt Per Octave input I'm going to change the Volterra to be a user scale, so we'll just do a couple notes here. We'll just do a small octave range here, maybe two octaves. And now we can go through and say, I want this guy to be C, and maybe I want this one to be like E flat. And then we'll go like that. And then we'll add a little bit of... You can hear that that's really nice. So this tracks really well. And now I'm just going to add the fracture into the mix so we can just get a little bit more of a sound of what it's going to sound like with, a, with another drum in the mix, right? And let's just clear this guy out and make a new sequence here. And then I'm going to use my gate lengths. And why don't we run through something here at the end? So yeah, using the one volt per octave input to make a bass line is a fun way to go. It's also, like I said, really cool just to tune to your, um, your the sound that you're playing. All right, so now we're just gonna go crazy with a little bit more uh, modulation of all the inputs and just uh, I'll put, I'll make a couple more tracks here. We're gonna do the Camara track. Then we're gonna do the Crucible track here. Part of my long cables, I'm just going for it right now. So here we go. Let's take this guy out, clear this out, and just make a new line. There we go. Add our camera in here. Oh, whoops. Wrong channel. My bad. And then we'll go and do our crucible. And then 
why don't we just make a quick little bass line here. I'm just going to take the pulse width out. And uh, you can barely see this, but I'm just going to go spectrum into the pull zero, into the pull zero, into an ADS RVCA, and then into the mixer. And we're going to use the architect to control these things. So we're going to go gate out into the ADS RVCA that's off the camera. Sorry about that. Volt per octave into the spectrum. And then we'll just run some Metron channels into step and reset here. Add some resets here and we'll get this guy going. Let's see what it sounds like. this guy up to be on the off beats here and we'll get tune this guy to be in tune right, so there's our sound it's had a different click here Ooh, that one's nice get a little bit more pitch envelope Alright, so now let's do the CV thing. So I'm just going to take this out and we will rock some decay. So I'm just going to take the Volterra out, uh, Volterra 2 into decay, and we'll just do like a nice little long one there and it's short here. There we go. Now I'm going to take another output of output of Volterra. We're going to run that into the saturation. And I'm just going to record some knob movements for saturation. So that's pretty cool. Got a lot of movement going on in there. And if I take up the uh, clipping here. You can hear that now. We've got a little bit more just uh, movement going on. Take my last Volterra and I'm going to run this into the click timbre. Same thing, we're just going to record different clicks. So now we've got different clicks going on. Back with the mix. saturation I just took over this knob of Volterra there and then when I let go we'll go back to that sequence all right so in our last video of crater we just did like 20 minutes of sounds there's a bunch of FM stuff in there there's just a bunch of more experimental uses but I just wanted to go through and show you how the thing works and um, hopefully you guys are as excited about it as we are because we are pretty pumped up. So thank you so much for watching and um, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you need a crater, go to the WMD website and uh, check us out. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.